Hello everybody, my name is Shady, and welcome to a video uh, here today. And I wanted to talk about Yai Miko and a possible misunderstanding about how her kit is supposed to work, okay? Uh, now, I'm no, I'm no Genshin Master Builder, okay? But I may be wrong in my assumptions here, but I think that the way everybody is thinking of how Yai Miko works is not the way... She's intended to work, okay? And I'll explain it here, okay? Now, first of all, I think that Yai Miko is going to be a very flexible character. But I do think the main way that Mihoyo intended her to be used isn't the main way people are thinking she's going to be used. Uh, a lot of people think that she's going to drop the totems, swap out, uh, and just wait for her ult to charge, come in, pop her ult. There you go, big damage is all she does. I think it's quite the opposite. And her artifact set and weapon tell you that very clearly. And people just throw away the, both of those things and say, no, that isn't supposed to be for her. Even though that artifact set clearly is supposed to be for her. Meaning Shimanawa. It's designed after her. It has a lot of fox, um, fox, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's very, it's very Aimiko, okay? Even in the description, it talks about uh, foxes and all that, yeah? Alright, so let's get into what I believe is how she's supposed to be used. So first of all, let's look at her stats. And I'll bring in Gani here for comparison, since people are comparing her to Gani for some reason, even though they're two completely different characters. But, uh, okay, here we go. So we have the base attack. That's the main thing people are worried about. Yai Miko's attack is too low to be an on-field DPS, yes? Now, if you look at Yai Miko and Ganyu, yeah. Ganyu has some pretty meaty attack, yeah. Some good attack right there. 335 compared to 264. It's pretty big, yeah. And when we go down to their uh, charge attacks, I'll even use Ganyu's full Frost Flake Arrow and the Bloom combined together to compare it to Yai Miko, yeah. Alright. So we got Yai Miko's charge attack damage. Going upwards of 339.38% as of beta right now, yeah. It's, it's pretty normal, pretty average, yeah. We got Ganyu over here, Frost Flake Arrow damage, okay, 294, plus the, uh, oh wait, that's the wrong thing, Frost Flake Arrow's right here, alright, 304% is even more, woo, we got the Frost Flake Arrow Bloom, which is 516, okay, that's upwards of over 800%, yeah, that's a lot of damage, big, big damage, alright, but, uh, let's look back at Yaimiko, 339, what people aren't seeming to notice is that her charge attack can proc multiple times now it may not hit smaller enemies multiple times but those big bosses like azdaha the flowers the valen all those big shots you're going to be hitting multiple times upwards of five times it seems uh here's the tweet from sai uh check it out on twitter 0x90 sai because a lot of people were asking, as of beta right now, I can say with confidence that Yai's charge attack can proc multiple times on the same enemy, and can proc on multiple enemies. And you can watch it yourself. When you uh, when when she does a charge attack, you can hit it, hear it hit multiple times, five times. So let's let's multiply that by five, okay? <laughs> That's more than Ganyu's Frost Flake Arrow. Okay, that's a lot of damage, but I believe Yai gets even crazier, okay? Let me break it down further, all right? Let's look at her weapon. The, um, what is it called? The, um, I don't know what it's even called, but let's just break down into the stats, all right? Kagura's Verity, that's what it's called. All right, base attack, 608, pretty neat. Secondary stat, 66.2 crit damage, that's good. Yai scales off a crit rate. So that gives her some crit damage, yeah? Passive R5. When using an elemental skill, character receives a Shinra Dance, increasing the elemental skill damage by 24%. Okay. Increase her elemental skill damage. That's pretty good. Oh wait, let's look back at her elemental skill. Alright, Sesho Sakura. Alright, upwards of, let's see here, 281.44% uh, times 3. Because you have three uh, Sesho Sakura out, 
and they all scale off of each other, increasing their damage together. So that's 281.44 three times. Now, imagine you're at Azdaha. Yeah, got a Zhang shield on your, on your Yai. Along with maybe a uh, maybe a fish. Maybe a fish is there if you don't have Raiden. If you didn't pull for Raiden and you have a fish on you, I think fish is going to be a top tier support for uh, Yai Miko. Okay. All right. Three turrets focusing on Azdaha. Plus Yai Miko's big hit charge attack hitting Azdaha five times. Okay. I didn't even do the calculations of how much that is, honestly. I'm not that good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just do this right now. All right, we got. Come on, give me a calculator. All right, so it's three hundred thirty-nine point thirty-eight percent. Yeah, thirty-eight percent. Thirty-eight times five. That's one thousand six hundred and ninety-six point nine percent damage percent on her charge attack if you hit all five hits. Okay, that's a lot of damage, plus your turrets that are constantly hitting. Oh wait, but it gets even crazier, because remember her weapon? Oh yeah, it increases elemental skill damage by 24%, so that's 24% added damage to the turrets, okay? Each of them, yeah, but uh, it gets even crazier. Let's go on to Genshin, okay? Alright, here we are in Genshin, alright. Don't mind my Hu Tao. She's probably going to be talking a lot because I'm pretty sure she's just... Don't mind her build. I'm, she's just holding stuff for now. I'm having trouble with her artifact dungeon. But uh, let's look at Shimanawa, okay? Two-piece set attack. Two-piece set attack plus 18%. That's more damage to Yaimiko and her charged attack. Her crazy, dumb charged attack. When casting an elemental skill, if the character has 15 or more energy, they lose 15 energy. And their normal charge and plunging attack damage is increased by 50% for 10 seconds. Now here's where I think the misunderstanding come in. Okay, people are like, oh no, Yaimiko's alt is 90 energy. That's going to take a while to build up. You're going to need Raiden. Yeah, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to need Raiden or some energy battery. But I don't think it's for spamming her ultimate. I think you're going to need that energy battery to keep this four piece set active to keep this passive active using 15 energy over and over and over again to increase her damage by 15 percent i mean 50 percent so that's 20 percent plus the 50 percent on her charge attack plus the added on damage to her turrets being near each other and then they get increased by 20 percent yeah i think i added an extra 20 in there i don't remember Oh, wait, no, no, 18%, 18%, scratch the first 20%, 18% plus the 20% on the turrets plus the 50% here for a charge attack, okay? I may be wrong here, I'm not that smart at Genshin building, but I, I think that might be pretty dumb, I think that's a dumb amount of damage on a big boss, okay? She's definitely not the mob... Actually, no. She is a mob-clearing clearing character. Those turrets could probably melt groups of mobs easily. But then, she can also melt a boss. Three turrets focusing one boss, plus her charge attacks going off of them. That's a crazy amount of damage. But, hold on. It gets even crazier, okay? Let's walk on over to fish here, okay? We got fish. I didn't build my fish. But I am now, because of what I think Fish and Yai might be able to do, plus an addition to Kokomi and Kazuha, okay? And Sucrose. I didn't build Sucrose, but I like Kazuha. He's cool. I'm just going to use Kazuha. But um, let's look at Fish here, okay? Let's look at her weapon. The weapon that I gave her. If you have Elegy for the end for Fish, this is going to be bonkers for Yai if I'm reading her right, okay? Refinement rank one. Yeah, and we got it. But we have Energy Recharge on it. Much needed for her. She's an electro character. Get those electro energy particles for Yai. Okay. Alright. A part of Millennial Movement that wanders a miss wins. Increase the Elemental Mastery by 60. That's Elemental Mastery increase for Yai Miko because she wants that. Okay. When the Elemental Skills or Elemental Bursts of the. Oh, wait, no. Elemental Mastery doesn't matter. I don't think it passes on the Yai. 
ignore that. But when elemental skills or elemental bursts of the character wielding this weapon hits opponents, that character gains a sigil of remembrance. This effect can be triggered every once every 0.2 seconds. It can be triggered even if said character is not on the field. Hmm, Oz. When you possess four sigils of remembrance, all of them will be consumed, and all nearby party members will obtain the Millennial Movement Farewell Song effect for 12 seconds. Millennial Movement Farewell Song increases elemental mastery by 100. That's free 100 elemental mastery for Yai. And increase attack by 20%. Yai Miko gains another 20% attack from Fish here. Just from existing. Just from her plopping down Oz. Oh, wait. But let's go back to the internet here. Sorry, I'm going back and forth everywhere. But um, doesn't Yaimiko have a uh, have a uh, passive talent to where uh, other nearby party members can decrease the cooldown of Yaimiko's Yakan Evocation Sesho Sakura? Hitting opponents with skill damage decreases it by one second and occur every 1.8 seconds. Hmm. Oz, Oz, could could I place you on a field and? Have you hit enemies for me to lower the cooldown of my on-field Yai's fox turrets? Maybe? That could be a possibility. I'm going to have to wait until she comes out to try this out. But I think this could be a wild thing, and I think people are reading Yai completely wrong. Okay? Now this gets even dumber with the artifact set for fish. Um, I'm, I'm going to be giving her uh, Tenacity of the Millinth. Because, um, yeah, HP increase, that's whatever. But 4P set, when the elemental skill hits an opponent, the attack of all nearby party members is increased <laughs> by another 20%. Yeah, he gets another 20% of attack. That's, that's, yeah, baby, that's, that's good. But also, um, I believe there's a new weapon coming out for Kokomi. Yeah, and everybody's like, uh, that weapon's gonna work better for your Yai Miko. It has energy recharge or something like that. Um, I believe it's an attack. I, I believe the subset's like energy recharge. Or yeah, I believe it's energy recharge. I forgot what the, uh, the other things that the weapon is, but I believe it's a weapon to help Kokomi support Yai Miko. I believe that's what the weapon is for. It's not for Kokomi to be a better standalone character, but her for the better for her to better work synergize with Yai Miko. And that's gonna be what makes people wanna maybe pull for Kokomi, because she synergizes well with Yai. Okay. And then for my final character, Kazuha, EM guy. Passes her EM, yeah. That's the whole shtick. But yeah. I think Yai Miko has potential to be very 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 insane and people are completely reading her kit wrong all right uh everyone please reconsider how she functions uh i don't believe she's the alt spam bot i believe that she's an on-field dps that has off field off field support helping her lower the cooldown of her e spamming charge attacks and having the turrets deal with the little fries okay on big bosses, you got all three turrets hitting that boss, plus your charge attacks. And plus the cooldown reduction from your off-field support hitting that enemy, Fish. Plus Kokomi. Kokomi is also going to be hitting them off-field because of her jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. I think I think that team's going to be pretty, pretty pog, alright? But, um, yeah. Thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if I, uh, messed up anything i'm not completely sure myself but i think this is how it's going to go i think this is what mihoyo wants you to do with her all right uh thanks for watching if anybody even sees this anyway but um see ya